Welcome to The Rock. Yes. We're excited to have you guys this morning. You guys enjoying the sunshine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nice, huh? It's a beautiful day. It is beautiful. We should have done beautiful day. Yeah. Missed it. That's okay. Oh, well. <laughs> God, we thank you so, so much for this beautiful day. God, we're going to praise you this morning. We're going to lift up our hands. We're going to thank you. We're going to love on you. And God, just have your way this morning. Let our worship be an intimate moment with you and not anybody else. Let us not be afraid to truly worship and show you the praise and the love, God, that you are so worthy of. God, as we go through the message, open up our ears and our hearts to you. Let us be able to truly hear what you're trying to tell us this morning. Let us not just hear it and do nothing. Again, let us not be those people that sit in church and read your word and quote scriptures to people without meaning and without it being able to change our lives and those around us. Let us be those that go and have an open heart for those all around us. And we thank you for your love and your passion. And Holy Spirit, this is your stage this morning. And have it your way. Amen. You guys want to stand up? If I 
I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Justified in scripture, it means just as if we never missed it in the first place. By his blood, we are justified. He doesn't see us for where we've been. He sees us for where he's been. I like that. Amen. Oh, breakthrough. I know I'm not the only one that's asking God for breakthrough in some area of my life. Whether it's breakthrough in your finances, breakthrough in your marriage, breakthrough in your children's lives, whatever it is, I pray that we seek God like never before, like our lives depend on it, and then we just worship through the process.
Sometimes when you're praising, they're like, they're good. Sometimes you're like, okay, I'm here and I'm singing because I just don't feel it. And then there's those sometimes where you just get like tickled pink and you're like, eh. God, we thank you for those moments, whatever they are this morning. Because in every single one, when we start praising and we start singing, God, your power moves. And it doesn't matter if it's on a day where you don't feel it. God's power is no less that day than the day you feel it and believe it. So God, wherever we are today, maybe we're here and we don't feel it, and we're like, I'm just gonna do it because you say to. Or whether we're here and we feel it and we're like, yes, God, I feel your presence. I feel the spirit, it's good. Or maybe you're just confused this morning and that's okay. Because God, as we sing these praises to you, let your spirit and your power totally encompass us this morning. That we walk out of here like little shook up nine volts, that anything we touch, it's like little sparks of your spirit coming out. And we thank you for that.
start pulling down those walls, pulling down those strongholds, God, that only you can do. Come on. of his name. When you don't know what to do or what to say, Jesus. I literally stand there sometimes just go, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it doesn't change the situation, but it changes me. <laughs> when my focus gets to be where it needs to be, okay. It's good. Everything's going to be okay. So good morning. We're so glad you guys are here today. My name is Bethany, if I haven't met you yet. Hi, Bethany. Oh, hi. It's I'm Terry. Did you pick me up on the side of the road today? You were in the ditch. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> <laughs> That's his favorite joke, by the way. <laughs> it is. So if you haven't met me yet, this is my husband. So he's allowed to be goofy like that and do strange things and say he picks me up and on the side of the road. And touch your butt. Yes, but not on stage, honey. No. <laughs> so welcome to the Rock Church, where our mission is helping families. Changing, changing lives, lives through the awesome, amazing love of Jesus. Uh, I have the privilege of being the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church, which looks like a lot of things. But during the winter months, uh, we have Rocky Zone every Saturday night from four to seven, and this coming Saturday is the last one. So, if and you last know, Saturday was crazy yes, busy. Last night was crazy. It, it was, was crazy. nuts. <laughs> but it's awesome. Like God is using that it is. so much to bring people into community. Like they come here, they hang out, and they're like, this is, this is really cool. You guys are awesome. You're real. And then they want to come back to church, and they, they are open to hearing about the hope of Jesus. And it's amazing. So don't miss it. If you haven't been here yet, I encourage you to come Saturday. And, you know, there's a good chance I will put you to work. <laughs> If you so, show up, yes. Yes, yeah, so last night we only had a few people here to volunteer, but God knew what we needed, and a few of our church family showed up just to play, and I was like, hey, Guess I need you Guess what? <laughs> so they jumped in and helped out, and I appreciate that so much, because that's, it's, we're a body, right? The Bible tells us we're a body. There's hands and feet and eyes and nose and mouth, and we all have to work together for the kingdom of God to grow, so... Last yes, night I was do. the pizza eye. <laughs> I think that was a hand. A pizza hand. <laughs> I may have pizza in my eye. I don't know. I don't know either. Definitely so, a lot of pizza going on. One more week of Rocky Zone. Another privilege that I have as the outreach pastor is to uh, co-champion the Bible to School program that we do on Fridays. And we desperately need some more volunteers if you are available at all on Fridays. Um, I could use you. We only have five or six more weeks before we're done for the school year, 
but I've lost a few people in the last few weeks and I have no substitutes right now, which is a real challenge because this is of course the time of year when people get sick and their kids get sick. So even if you can't commit to being here every Friday, if you can just be a sub, that would be awesome. And then we also need drinks and paper plates. That was the other thing, drinks and paper plates. So we just use like the Capri Suns because we give the kids pizza while they're here and they get to go in the bounce house and they love it. So we have uh, 56 kids that are coming every Friday. And yeah, 90% uh, of them do not attend church of any kind. <laughs> Our third grade teacher sat in one of the small groups and she's like, can you believe that these kids have never heard of communion? And I was like, uh, yes, because most of them have never been to church before. So yep. they have no idea what that would mean. But they just, the third graders just finished up watching the movie of the life of Christ told from the um, perspective of a child. And it was really cool. It was like, they're so into it. They were just like staring and watching. That's really awesome. So this week's lesson is Easter for both grades. So let me know if you can help and I'll get you, get you some applications and get your stuff ready. So thanks for that. Absolutely. What and by the way, if you're new, if you're new, you, you can, can use go. this wonderful, amazing, super awesome. Yes, it's a very cool QR cool code. Cool QR code to my wife made. Yes. And I just created the flyers for the Easter explosion and there's QR codes on there too because they're easy. Let's face they it. They are easy. Like my new waffle maker I just got, no instructions. One little piece of paper, scan this QR code. So Yep. That's the way, that's the world. <laughs> and you can also give on there through there and all those kind of good things. And we yep. don't spend a lot of time talking about that. And there's green boxes back yonder that you can sit they're, there. And they're really full today. So you yes. have to like really. And if you're vertically challenged, we found out that some people need a step it's stool. So true, we may have yes. to put a step stool there next week, but it's no good. <laughs> no, we're just kidding. But we thank you guys for giving. That makes everything possible that it we're does. doing around us. We're yeah. doing a lot of cool stuff. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Yep. Actually, this morning, I'm going to talk about that even a little bit deeper. So it's going to be amazing and Exciting. awesome and good. And then we got the Easter explosion. That's Easter why all these explosion. bikes are everywhere. Yes. Look at all these bikes. Someone Thanks came carrying ride. a bike in this morning and they're like, I never rode this, so I want to give it away. Mm -hmm. It was but a little kid. It was we'll so take cute. it. I love it. Yeah. And, it's and it's really awesome. An opportunity to give to And if you'd else. like to volunteer, we have sign up back yonder. We do. And also the registration for the kids is now open. So if you're volunteering or if you're just coming and bringing kids, I do need you to register. That's how we keep account of how many kids we have in each age group and make sure we have enough candy. So register your kids, share like the Facebook post and stuff so that more people in the community have the chance to register. And if you have any questions, let me know. You and can pray with us for the wedding, we wedding weather. Yes, yes. We need a wedding weather, yes. We need wedding weather. Yes, that would be good. I would like wedding weather. It's supposed to <laughs> rain for like nine days. I it's, just looked. Yes. It is supposed to rain for nine days. It is. But and and we'll it said see. rain or snow showers. on. But God's bigger than that, so it's all good. Yep, and how so many know sure. weathermen are definitely wrong many times in right. life? Yes. So we'll just go and they'll be wrong, right? Exactly. I mean, I don't know where else you get a job where you can get 80% off and still <laughs> be able to keep your job. Keep your but job. Hey, you yeah. can get a weatherman job. You got it. But anyhow, so we have Easter candy. We have so much Easter candy. We do have I'm so, so much. I'm so thankful to everyone. I really thought this year, like, I wasn't going to have enough because it's so expensive. And you guys have been killing it. So thank you. So we're going to be packing bags um, this Wednesday out in the Next Gen Wing at 630. So come on out and help. And I'm hopeful we're going to get 500 bags all packed on Wednesday night. And we're gonna we do have a lot of candy, and we thank yes. everyone who gave because we have a lot of candy. Yeah, and so. if you're coming Wednesday and you forgot your candy, you can bring it with you Wednesday. And right now, I need more, like, fruity-type candy. We got tons of chocolate, which is a good problem. Yeah, we cleaned all these out three times. We did. Every time they marked theirs down, we'd go back and buy a whole nother case. So, <laughs> so it, it's been good. It's been good. <laughs> yep. Yes, so it's been awesome. And then, just to let you know and keep you up to date, this is what we did in Vandergrift this week because I like to keep you guys in a loop so you know what it's doing. Yeah. Hopefully someday in the near future when all the walls are in and everything's framed, we'll be opening it up and saying, if you want to go see it, we can explain to you what we're doing. Um, after we get all the walls in, you can have a tour, yes. Um, it's still 
we're about 65% of the way there. It's been a really lot of work and some hard things that yes. had to be done. And this week, this was one of them. We had to cut out a beam that was in the way of the stairwell going down. It was a 14-inch I-beam that was a very heavy-duty beam. And someone from the church who owns a steel company came over and cut it out and removed it. And she's like, I don't like you because I really boxed a beam in, but I said I had to support the weight. So that's the way yeah. life works. But it's out now. So yeah. hopefully we'll have a set of stairs there soon. And then we'll have two sets of stairs in. It's so cool how God keeps yes. making people with the skills that are just what we need. At just it the is. Right time. Like, it is really awesome. And we awesome. thank God for that. So we'll yeah. be there Tuesday night again. Tuesday afternoon, we usually start around 4 and we'll be framing walls and might even have some stairs framed in by then. I don't know. We'll see what happens because it's supposed to rain. So when it rains, I usually work at Vandergriff. And then this is Shalakta. Yesterday we went to the Shalakta Church, which we just got possession of recently. And it was our first work day. And this is what it looked like before. If you notice all the bushes, they're now gone. <laughs> so we brought in a skid loader and an excavator. And we redid the front of the church and all around it and ripped everything out. And it's really cool now because we have multiple people who have dump trucks and skid loaders and excavators and all that kind of stuff so now we can do those kind of things mm -hmm. and here's one of the people that's mark sitting on his skid loader out front and 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 uh, others brought their excavator mike brought his excavator so it's yeah. really cool that we can do this kind of stuff and get it done where it's sitting someday there'll be a patio mm -hmm. and sidewalks and all those kind of things it's going to be and different the door is moving to the middle of yes. the church and we're probably going to paint it and we hate red brick, and someone actually modern. has volunteered not only to buy the paint, but paint it. Do the work. And I'm holding them to it. I'm just telling you straight up. I'm like, man, you have fun. I'll be there to cheer you <laughs> on. So it's going to be a lot of painting. It is that 1970 old brick that, like, if you rub against it, it takes half an inch of skin off you, if you want to know what it's like. I don't know if you understand that or not, but I'm if you've ever been around it, you'll understand that someday. So that's it, and it's getting there, and it's doing well, it's and we tore out all the pews yesterday, and all that kind of stuff, and all the, we, we did good. You did. So it was a lot of stuff. We had about 25, 30 people there, and awesome. we got a lot of stuff done, so it was really awesome. So thank you. Really glad you guys are here this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, I'm excited what God's doing and how God's trusting us to build his kingdom. And it's always been my dream to be part of something where God would build a kingdom because that's what it's all about is getting people to know Jesus and changing the, the destiny of people. I love that song we were singing this morning and if my wife wouldn't have uh, beat me to the stage, we probably would have sang it again because that power of Jesus' name is crazy. And if you haven't experienced it, I pray that you will finally step into that place where you'll let go of everything in your life and let God take you in that journey. And that's what I want to preach about this morning on it preach about the Hebrew words of praise. This is my last Sunday on the Hebrew words of praise. After Easter, I'm going to start a series on faith. I used to not like series, but I'm really enjoying series. I want you to learn to build your faith and uh, all those kind of things. You can't have a lot of praise if you don't have a lot of faith. And by the way, you can't have a lot of faith if you don't have a lot of praise. And it's, it's so cool when you see how much God has intertwined everything all around us. And I want to take you on a journey this morning again on the power of praise. And let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to gather together in your name. Lord, thank you for all the people that are here, the people that are online. Lord, everybody that's listening, I pray, Father, supernaturally send your Holy Spirit down. One more time. God, he's already here. I know he is. But Lord, just stir the hearts and stir their lives. And he doesn't have to come down because he came down. But God, just move in every heart and move in every soul. And God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done. And Father, prepare our hearts to receive our emotions. Prepare our spirits, God, to drink. Prepare our bodies, Lord, to respond and prepare our minds, Father God, to process it for your glory and your honor and your praise. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. I, if you catch me, I, I change the way I pray sometimes just to let you know it's like because of the way I was taught, I pray things like it really sounds spiritual to say send the Holy Spirit down, but how many know he's already here? But, you know, we were taught those kind of dumb things like, pray the Holy Spirit comes down right now. Well, he's here. He showed up. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us if any two or three gather together in his name, there is he with us also. So, and there's power in gathering together. That's why the devil is trying so hard to get people just to go digital and not gather together and just sit in the comfort of their homes and all that. Because he understands that whenever we gather together, and why is that? Because it's a sacrifice of praise to come to church. It really is. I hate that word. 
It's a sacrifice of praise to come together because this isn't church. We're church. And I don't like buildings being called church. Matter of fact, I'm going to have a tremendous amount of fun. I don't know. We were sitting there yesterday, and I was just absolutely amazed at the traffic that goes down 422 in Shalak to where the site is. And I'm so excited to make something that looks like a church not look like a church and have everyone talk about it. It's so exciting. I enjoy doing that. I like stirring the pot. I just have that in my demeanor somehow, some way. I don't know why, where it came from, but it just happened. So anyhow, the power of praise. Uh, last week we talked about tequila praise. No, tequila praise, not tequila praise, just to let you know. And if you didn't miss, how many were here this service last Sunday? How many hang around long enough to see the tequila dance? Okay, good. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty crazy. I don't know. Where'd Gene go? He hid. Okay. He didn't want to be here when I said about it, but it's all good. He's, he's okay. I like Gene. You know what? I'd rather people dance and shout tequila instead of tequila any day of the week because that's transformation in people's lives. But this week, I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to talk back again about halal praise. You know, it's really interesting to me as I went through these seven Hebrew words of praise that are in the Word of God. And by the way, our English language is limited. Everyone understand that? So we look at praise, and praise in your mind when you read praise in the Bible is according to your definition of what praise is. Now, in some places that might be the clap. Some places that might be the raise your hand. Some people that might be that you sit like this and watch the people who are praising. Um, that's not at all what God was talking about. I'll just let you know. God wants you to be involved. Some places, you know, it's where you get excited, whatever. But God actually, in the, in the Hebrew, God wrote seven words for praise. And they're all different. They're all different actions, different things. And we're going to talk about three of those again because as I went through this series of praise, God showed me some really interesting things. And one of those is they're connected. It's a process. Man, God's been dealing with my heart a lot about processes, and I hope you're getting that. That this thing's not... I grew up in a church where we thought, everyone say thought, it was miraculous. Like you just laid hands on somebody and, woo, man, they got Jesus, and they got healed, whatever. And don't get me wrong, that happens. But my spiritual walk with God is really my choice and my process. Now, I compared it to this in the first service, and I just want you guys to know what it's like. Process is different than the miraculous, and I'm not downplaying the miraculous, but I don't ever believe that you can see the miraculous until you went through the process of transformation in my own life. Now, I, I look at the miraculous or the easy, what most people want in church is the easy, is Elmer's glue. How many in here ever played with Elmer's glue? How many know that it doesn't work very good? Works great for paper, right? How many in here ever played with epoxy? How many in here never played with epoxy? Okay, for those of you who never played with epoxy, I encourage you who played with epoxy to take those people home, mix up some epoxy, and put it in their fingers and let them hold them like this for a while. I'm not talking super glue. Okay, I promise you, you will never forget again the analogy of which I'm giving you. You see, whenever I look at Elmer's glue, Elmer's glue activates by air hitting it and it drying, right? Super glue activates whenever you get it out of the tube, how many know this, and squirt it there and you put your finger, how many ever glued your fingers together with super glue? All right, they're my kind of people. How many ever peeled it apart and didn't lose skin? Praise God, you did good, all right? Because it does something. It activates by air. Everyone get that? But this thing's, I'm going to buy a new one before this week is over, just to let you know, because I have a feeling mine is just seen its better years. But anyhow, epoxy's different. Epoxy works by two chemicals being mixed together that produce heat, and they bind when they bind, they can never go back to their previous state, and they can never again go back to being soft. How many know that who ever played with epoxy? So you got to understand, so what do you want? Do you want something that was done by just happening by air, or do you want something that happened in your spiritual walk with God by a process? In other words, you go through it. You see, I spent a lot of time in church when I was growing up as a kid, and they always used to talk about something called backsliding. I don't know if anyone else grew up in that, but you're back, you know, I, 
I, I went to every altar call because I figured, you know, they always said, like, if you swore you're backslidden, if you looked at a woman lustfully backslidden, I live backslidden. I'm just telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time. I was in every altar call that ever took place until I just figured, if I don't get it by now, it's over. But anyhow, we used to talk about that. And, and you know what? The Bible talks about it, everyone say a little bit. But the church likes to talk about it a lot bit. But when you go through the process of changing, epoxy can't go back to what it used to be. How many know that? Just like, Mike, you work with cement a lot, right? Cement is not air dried. Everyone thinks cement dries from air. It is not drying by air. It is not at all. It is done by, help me, heat and hydration. So what I mix it and how I mix it makes it bind either faster or slower and we can use more water and all that. I'm not getting into that because I'm not a concrete guy and Mike will think I'm stupid and he already knows I'm stupid so I don't <laughs> want to prove it to him. All right. But does everyone understand concrete's not done by air drying. It's done by if you ever walk up to concrete even when it's cold outside and you put your hand on it you'll find it's warm and it's a chemical reaction. How many know once you pour concrete you can't, you're on a concrete floor. You can never get to go back to a liquid state again. Everyone get this? That's your spiritual life. What kind of walk do you want with God? That's what God's taking us through on these Hebrew words of praise. If you want to sit there and be a casual praiser, you'll be here. But if you want to get to halal, you have to go through the process. And when you get there, you're never going back again. And I don't know about you. I don't ever think about, what are you going to do if you backslide? Well, Terry ain't backsliding. Why? Because I know in whom I believe and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed unto him on that day. But I also know something. He's so real in here that it doesn't matter how much you try to tell me that God's not real. I know in here that God's real. You can tell me what happened 681 million years ago and try to tell me that that evolved and this did that. All I can tell you is these animals that are like slugs are really stupid for not evolving into a chipmunk at least. I'm just saying. And I never saw a, sl a, a slugunk. Has anyone else in here ever seen a slug unk? It's like half, half slug and half chipmunk. I didn't either. But you know what? The devil does that to destroy your faith, seriously, to attack your faith because God is clearly seen in all of creation. So I want to take you in this journey. Halal praise is foolish praise. All right? You know, to some people, this is praise. Man, I was praising God this morning. Okay. Now, to me, I'm just going to give you an illustration of what God painted for me in life and praise. If you worship God like this, it's like, I look at it this way. I'm stuck in a ditch, and I need help. If I'm stuck in a ditch, how many of you are going to raise your hand like this and go, give me a hand? How many know what I'm talking about? If you're stuck in a ditch, what do you do? You raise your hand, right? You don't care who's around. You'll jump, you'll do whatever. That's God moving in our lives. Don't be afraid to praise him. Praise does something. Praise is like that catalyst of epoxy that when you let it in and mix it with your faith and mix it with the Holy Spirit, mix it with that, that you're never going to go back to what you used to be. Everyone got that? Good. So here we go. Halal is foolish. It's shaking, jumping, leaping, dancing, all that kind of stuff because it's so amazing. And i got to fly through this because I want to get somewhere this morning, all right? So I want you to understand it means to be clamorous. It means making or marked by this loud outcry, sustained din. I didn't know what din is, so I looked it up for you. So this is what din means. It means foolish, right? To rave, to celebrate. For those of you who have never praised God like this, it's like when the Pittsburgh Steelers are in the Super Bowl and they score a touchdown. Now, listen, you're excused from this message if you're one of those, you're sitting there. Let's see, when was the last time Steelers were in the Super Bowl? Uh, Jerome Bettis. Am I right? Was that the last Super Bowl they were in? Josiah, I'm looking at you. When was the last time they were in the Super Bowl? Did they win or lose? Well, we don't want to talk about that one. So the last one I remember him winning was the 2008, I think it was, in the Super Bowl in Detroit, Michigan. And if Jerome Bettis just scored a touchdown, you went, honey, that was cool. You can sit there and praise God like that. But if you were one of those, like, yeah! ooh, 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 and all that chest bump, then you have to praise God like that. 
Everyone got that? That's what I'm talking about. You see, God wants us to praise him more than we praise him in anything else in our life. God wants us to celebrate his goodness. Now, we're going to talk about that because there's a reason why Simeons can't do that. And it's because you've never experienced God doing great things in your life. You see, I think I, I gave up professional football because I'm, I'm just going to be biased and tell you what I believe. I really believe it's turned into WWE. Just my personal opinion. It really, and I really get tired of people who are like down 37 points and they finally intercept the ball and they act like they're like Goliath on steroids. And I'm like, dude, look at the scoreboard. It's 27 nothing, and you finally got an interception. You're a little too late, all right? But I guess some days you got to celebrate that kind of stuff, but I just don't like that. That's just me, my personal thing. So I want you to understand praise is the same way with God. You have that relationship with God, and I'm going to use this because a lot of you get football. How many women in here don't like football? Great, thank you. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. Because you know what? That's kind of like it is with, with God, all right? So you're sitting there, and you're like, you could care less about the game. That's how some people with God, because they don't understand the game. They haven't been in the game. They've never played the game, and it's just not interesting to them. So those are the casual observers, right? They go to the Super Bowl party for the fellowship or the food, right? How many know what I'm talking about? You don't care who win or lose. You just want some good food because you heard so-and-so is coming with their special wings, and you want to eat their wings, right? So you're just already in. So that's like that. So that's that group of church people. So then you have the other ones, they're like the casual participants, right? Those ones like, did they score? What happened? Oh, you can see the replay, so you're not watching, right? That, that's, that's that group. Right? Then you have this group out here. It's like, get out of the front of the TV! How many know that group? Right? It's like you're engaged. You don't want to miss anything. Don't call me. If your phone rings, you throw it across the room. If the stillers start losing, you stomp on the phone. Right? <laughs> Even though the phone did nothing about it, it's the people in the field. That's why I say it's like the WWE. Like, you know, you're jumping on your phone. But anyhow, so you go through that. So with God, the same thing happens in our lives. And I want you to get this. So this word of praise is written in the Bible 117 times. Everyone go, wow. You see, but you never caught that, and I never caught that because we just read the word praise, right? So you're like, they praise God. So we don't realize that now I'm starting to do something as I find scriptures and it says praise. I go and look which one they're doing, and I write it in there in my mind, and I say, oh, well, that's what they're doing, and that's why they're praising. 117 times, you ready for this? One word. There's seven Hebrew words of praise. Everyone got that? How many? All right, good. So this one word is in there 117 times. Everyone got that? How many times? 117. Ready for this? 54% of all the words in the Bible that are translated to praise are halal praise. Foolish, clamorous, crazy, worshiping, magnifying God 54% of the time. All right, don't feel convicted yet. Okay, we'll get there later. What did you see the praise this morning as we praised God and thank God for the things he's did? I think we were in the 46% of praise. Sumians weren't even in the 46% of the praise. You were just standing there holding on for dear life in the chair. Please don't leave me. These people are crazy, right? What's wrong with the worship team, Right? That's where we're at, right? You don't want to be that group, all right? It's participation. Remember, it's like, do you want to be Elmer's glue or do you want to be, yeah, epoxy? Because I want to be radically changed. I don't want to just have an Elmer's glue. Because how many know that Elmer's glue, as quick as a storm or any kind of water or rain comes, what's it do? It separates. It goes back to its original state. How many know that? You know, you can get a big glob of Elmer's glue and put it on a piece of paper, let it dry hard, and put it back in water again, and it'll go back to its original state. So what's that tell me? If I want to walk with God like Elmer's glue, I'm always going to be changing back and forth. And the Bible tells me straight up that a double-minded man shall receive nothing of the Lord. And that's what God's saying. One day you're hard for God, and the next day you're squishy. Right? Because a little water hits you. Suck it up, buttercup. All right? So we're going to get into this. We're going to get a little bit deeper because I'm taking you on a journey. Now listen, the following may offend you. I just want to tell you that. It's going to probably offend you. 
I almost had this awesome person who looked like they were offended and it looked so much like Isabella I couldn't do it. I'm serious. I saw the picture of Isabella and I'm like, that looks like her. Brad, if you want to see it later, I'll show it to you in my office and you can hold it up for her. You look offended, honey. All right. But anyhow, it's going to offend you. And we're going to go deep here this morning and it might ruffle your feathers, but you know what? God's not here just to be your friend and your pal and to pet your head. God has not brought you here so that you can stay a buttercup. God has not brought you here so you can stay Elmer's glue. God has brought you for such a time as this into the kingdom of God to be epoxy. To be something that is so powerful that it can never go back to its original state. Do you know you can take epoxy and glue metal together and it's almost as strong as it was before? You know now they have epoxy that is epoxy, it's called hydraulic cement and things like that, that they can pour into water in bridges and stuff like that, and it turns hard just like that because it, nothing bothers that, because once the process starts, it doesn't care about the environment, it only cares what's been mixed in with it. Does everyone understand that? You see, that's where we need to become as believers in Christ, and I want you to get to that point. God did not call us to be casual followers of God. God called us to become where we come to the place that it doesn't matter what the world tries to tell me how real God isn't that I know in my heart he is it doesn't matter what storm hits me I'm not separating back to the jelly little Elmer's glue on God did you do this to me I don't understand why God did it no I'm not going there anymore that I sit there and say I know whom I'm believing and God is in control and the word of God says in Romans 8 28 that he works all things together for my good and I don't know how what's happening in my life right now is going to turn to good but I am now what I'm epoxy. How many know that? Nod your head if you want to be epoxy, okay? If you didn't, we'll pray for you a little bit later on and nod it for you. Just kidding. So this might offend you a little bit, but this is what praise does. You see, when I bring salvation and I bring water baptism, I bring the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I bring praise, and I bring prayer, and I bring faith, do you realize I'm starting to activate things in my life that begin to radically change me? When I start understanding that I'm a conqueror and I'm an overcomer, listen, I sit there, am I afraid some days? Yes, but I cast down fear. Do I sit there and wonder about what's going to happen next? Yes, but I cast it down and say it doesn't really matter because because I know that God's bigger than the boogeyman. So we accept that, we receive that, and we understand it, because why? We've got epoxy in our lives, but this praise activates it. And I want to take you on this journey this morning. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy halal your name. This psalmist is writing and saying, look, the oppressed are there, but Lord, we're not going to worry about that stuff because we're going to halal in your name because something happened in our lives. Now, in order to have halal praise, you've got to go through the process. Remember, I talked three weeks ago about yada. It's my wife's favorite now. Everyone remember Yada? That's where Leah was sitting there having children. She was rejected by Jacob, and she's going through the process, and she's sitting there, and she wants, well, now my husband will love me. Now my husband will love me. Now my husband will love me. I'm my husband. I'm loving Jesus. That's what she says. She names her child Judah, and she says, now I will praise the Lord. Yada, 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 right? That's a yada praise, where it says, with hand lifted, shaking at God, like that, where I am yadding before the Lord. It does not matter. You know, some days you've got to do that to the devil. How many in here ever worked out with a speed bag? Praise God. Only one person, two people. Gosh, what'd you all do for fun? Well, they're hard, but you know what? It's like that. You, you sit there, and you this kind of stuff when you're doing it, right? You got to get the rhythm. You got to do it. All right, go through that. I'm not going into that right now. All right, so the next thing is Tehillah. After I yada, you see, I've got to make the choice that I don't care what other people do anymore. I'm not here to please anyone. That is yada praise. That is the decision in my life. I'm going through the process. They won't say process. So I'm going through the process of, I've got yada praise in my life, now I'm in Tehillah praise. Tehillah praise is, because I made up my mind, I'm not serving grandma anymore, I'm not making my husband happy anymore, I'm not making my wife happy anymore, I don't care about my past anymore, I'm not crying about everything that comes my way anymore, I'm not scared of the boogeyman anymore, I'm not scared of any of those kind of things anymore, because I made up my mind, I'm trusting Jesus, I come to Tehillah praise. Tehillah praise is where I build a testimony of praise, it is my story story. Ryan doesn't get excited about my story. He gets excited about his story. Maria doesn't get excited about my story. She gets excited about her story because I lived my story and they lived their story. So it is my personal experience 
of praise where I am praising God because of what God has done, not for anyone else, not because someone got healed around me, not because someone got set free around me, but because I've been through this process and my life is radically changed and I have a praise called Tehila. Remember, be not drunk with wine, but be drunk in the spirit, right? That same thing from last week, where I sit there, and I don't care about that anymore. I'm drunk in God, and you know what? This is my story, and you know what? You can sit there and say, well, Pastor Terry, I just don't know why you get so crazy for Jesus. I sit there and go, I don't know why you stay so Elmer's gluey, and you're kind of gooey. Now, gooey chocolate chip cookies are okay, but gooey Christians are not okay. Everyone got that? Hard chocolate chip cookies are not good. Gooey ones are. But I don't want a gooey Christian. I want to be somebody that's changed by God. So now I have yada. I've made up my mind. I have tehillah, where now I have a testimony behind it. Now God wants to take me somewhere, and it's, everyone say process. This stuff doesn't happen. You see, for years, we've tried to pray it in. I was taught all my life, if you want to see a revival, you pray and fast, and God will do the rest. That is such a lie. And I'm just telling you straight up, because you better have teams, you better have support, you better have studied, you better have prepared, you better have, there's a whole lot going on. I remember I, when I first got that, and I was in, in the previous denomination we used to be, and I said that one day, and God goes, oh no, God will provide everything we need whenever he sends revival. And I thought, you're crazy. I don't know if you get that or not, but if you want transformation, you've got to prepare for transformation. Does everyone understand that? If you don't prepare for it, the devil's going to steal one of your elements and you're not going to become epoxy. How many know if you don't put enough of the, how many ever did this mixed epoxy and you didn't mix enough and it stays gooey? Then you know what you have? It's called annoying. Because it's really sticky, nothing really wants to clean it and you're trying to wipe it on everything. Can you tell I've done it before? Yes, I've done it before where I'm like, it did not follow the instructions. You see, I learned about this stuff in, when I worked for Xerox Corporation because we had epoxy, but it was in two perfectly measured packages that you tore open, squirt up, mix up, and you could glue anything together, even yourself. But don't do that at home. So they sit there, and we got this. So I've got that part. So I want the next part. I need this. You're now in a miracle place. You see, when I move into halal, the reason I become so crazy is I understand the greatness of God. You all ready for this? I cannot impact a world in Yada. I cannot impact a world in Tehillah. I only impact a world when I get into Halal. You see, because I'm not just praising God because of my story. I'm not just praising God because I made a choice. I'm praising God because now I understand the position that God has now positioned me in, in this Halal spot, and I get rowdy and radical and passionate for Jesus. This is going to get good. I want to tell you what, I hang along around a lot of Christians, and I want to tell you what, I can tell you who's passionate for God, and I can tell you who's not, and I can tell you who's Elmer's glue, and I can tell you who's epoxy. Now, you might not want me to, don't ask me if you don't want to know, all right? But you know what? When you're living in halal, you can look back and know where you're at. When you're living in kindergarten, you can't understand 12th grade. How many understand what I'm saying? Now listen, I'm not putting you down. Anybody can make it from kindergarten to 12th grade. If you pay attention and you put the work in, everyone go yes. Right? Anyone can do it. Anyone in this room can come to wherever they want to be. Anyone in this room can make up that choice. But it's a choice. It's a process. How many know you can't go from kindergarten to 12th grade? Well, you can. But it ain't going to end well. Right? Right? How many know you've got to go through that process? There's 12 summers, 11 summers you go through. There's growing up. There's puberty. There's a whole lot of events that happen from kindergarten to 12th grade. Everyone understands that, right? You had to go through that process. That same thing happens with our walk with God. But here's what American Christians try to do, and the devil's tried to get you to lie into. You see, he wants you to only maybe make it as far as this right here, where it's your own personal story, and you're just like, hey, what about you? I'm just so happy I'm going to go see Jesus one day. And that's all you care about. You see, you're not a world changer where you want to change the world. You're a person who wants to be there, and you're just content because you're okay, and the rest of the world, too bad. Does everyone get that? 
So you've got to move into this position. You've got to make up your mind that I want to become a halal praiser. Now listen, the biggest example I can give you of halal praise is David. David, it says, and halal is what he's doing whenever he's moving the ark of God into Jerusalem after he's become king of all of Israel. He's moving that ark. He tried it his way. Everyone say his way. And it turned into a disaster. Somebody died. He tried the quick way. Everyone say quick way. What was the quick way? God said you move the Ark of the Covenant, that you move God on staffs by priests carrying it and walking it and praising God and offering sacrifice and moving it. Well, David said, because he was American, there's got to be an easier way. And David said, why do we want to walk the cart or walk the, the Ark into the temple of God when we can put it upon a cart and just ride it? That's faster. Microwave. Everyone get that? You all got that now, right? We, we live this way. Our American brains have been programmed that there always has to be an easier way. Now, that's good because we have incredible inventions because of that. But in Christianity and walking with God, that's terrible because there is no microwave with God. If you want to know what God's microwave looks like, you ready for this? Do this when you go home. Get a spoon out of your cabinet. Stick it in the microwave, close the door, and hit start. That's God's idea of microwave moving. All right? We like that, but how many know, if you don't know what happens, just try it. Try an egg. It's just as fun. How many ever put an egg in the microwave? Man, there's a lot of stupid people in here. How many ever had it blow your door open? No? Huh. I'm not going to tell you that story. They can blow the doors off the microwave. I'm just telling you up front. Don't ask me how I know. I just know. I heard it from a friend, okay? Just to let you know that. But that's what happens when we go with God and we want to say, well, God, just can't you hear me up here? You become an explosion. And we've seen that a lot in the Christian church where we have these one-hit wonders that sit there and get on fire for God. They die out. I want you to go through the process. Why? Because God wants you to change a world for a lifetime. You see, he wants you to become that epoxy because when the epoxy's there, it's not changing. It's holding together what God designed it to hold together. It's doing what God told it to do. It's walking where God told it to walk. It's talking the way God told it to talk. It's not wishy-washy anymore. And the devil don't want you to get there. So he wants you to stay. That Every time a storm comes along, you melt. Every time something happens and you smash your thumb, you swear. It's going to get convicting. Listen, that's the first steps of your Christianity that when you smash your thumb and you don't throw things and swear anymore, you're starting to get enough Jesus in you. There's a lot of you who need to pray on that one because you're still throwing things, okay? You got to get that. You got to understand that, that that's, God changes you because that epoxy has gotten a hold of your heart that you no longer want to look like the world and act like the world. You want to be dif- different, and God wants to change you. So, now is the miracle place, the place of halal, which is praise. So it's kind of like this, and this is the illustration that God gave me this morning as I was sitting in my office and just studying and talking to him. All right, this is yada praise. I don't know if you know what that is. I'm going to describe to you that what it is in case you don't understand construction. That is called a pow-driven foundation. How many in here know what a pow-driven foundation is? Praise God. So a pow-driven foundation is one of two things happen on a foundation. Notice you don't see a foundation like a normal house that is about 20 inches wide by 10 inches thick, and it sits there in the ground. This is something different. A pow foundation is made of one of two things. Either an auger goes down into a hole, and they fill it with rebar and concrete, and they build a big pillar, or they take massive pieces of steel, sometimes as long as 50 feet long, hardened steel, and they take a crane, and they drive that thing down in until it stops. And that steel will go through soft shale, all the stuff that would stop you. It doesn't stop. And on that, when you get to that place, that's my yada. I need something bigger. Okay, now there's a reason why I want you to get that. Because most Christians are trying to build a house to live in until Jesus comes or until they die. All right, ready for this? Going to get convicting. God did not call you to be comfortable. I want to say it again. God did not call you to be comfortable. There is nowhere in the Word of God that it says Paul went down to the beach and he forgot his suntan lotion and got a sunburn. 
There is nowhere in the Word of God where it says Paul was very content with his ministry thing. And after he went on his ministry tour, he decided to go to the Bahamas and live out the rest of his days. Now, come on. Those of you who say you know the Word of God. God never gives us the word of retire. It is an American word. God never gives us the word, and it's going to be convicting. God never sits there saving your 401k. God never said, well, someday I've got to prepare for that. The Bible does not say that. And I really believe a lot of the American church has been duped into a lie. And we've done things that God has not called us to, which takes away the power of the gospel in our lives. God said, I'll supply all your needs. Our lives should be driven by my yada and my testimony. I know God's walking with me. I know God's talking with me. I know God's running with me. It was really funny. I was at Shalakta yesterday, and we were giving away some pieces of the church to somebody who used to hang around here at one time. And they walked up to me, and they said, Terry, don't you understand you're getting too old for this? And I said, dude, you got the wrong person. I don't know who you're talking about, but there ain't no way I'm even thinking that way. Because you know what? I'm here to change the world. And as long as God's giving, you think I want to sit out there on the beach whenever I can be talking about Jesus? You can ask her what I think about that opinion. She has a hard time getting me to skip a Sunday. I'm like, honey, you know we could make it back and I could preach tomorrow. Am I not speaking the truth? It's in here. It drives me. There's not, they're like, what do you need another building for? I said, God offered it, I took it. What are you supposed to do in those kind of situations? I don't know about you. Yeah, I could have sat there and did the math and looked at our budget and our income and said we can't afford this. But how many know God doesn't care what you can afford or what you can't afford. God says if I give a door, I've made an open door for you that no man can shut. Well, when God opens a door for me, I'm going to walk through it. Everyone say Amen. Because why? I believe you're here for a reason and a purpose, and you're here for a reason and a purpose that God wants me to force you into ministry. Did you all catch what I just said? I said God wants me to force you into ministry. Because some people, the only way they'll jump in the pool is when you push them off. Everyone say amen. Some people, the only way they're going to get in the pool is when they get enough people to go grab their lawn chair and throw them in with it. Now, how many have ever done that? Okay, you're my kind of people. Kevin, you and I have to hang around around more. The rest of these, I don't know. I don't know about you, but when someone's too comfortable and they're sitting there, they're like, don't get me wet. You ever want to go to the pool with me and wherever around say, don't get me wet? You just said the wrong words. To me, I heard, get me in the pool and get me really wet because I want to be there. That's just how my mind works. Maybe it's broken. I don't know. I don't think it is, but I don't think a lot either, so it's Okay. <laughs> I'm serious when I mean that. God has brought you here for such a time as this. God has not brought you to the Rock Church because I am a really good looking pastor, even though I am. God has not brought you to the Rock because it's cool. God has not brought you to the Rock because we got a cool worship team. God has not brought you to the Rock because we have a fun set. God has brought you to the Rock because God has put in our hearts to be a church that radically changes the world. And that's going to take work. That's going to take labor. That's going to take uncomfortableness. That's going to take our money. That's going to take everything we've got to do it. But souls are worth it. And I want to move to Halal. Do you understand that? You see, you've got to grab this. God didn't call you to love your family more than you love the world. We need to get back to everyone ready for this. We are family. My brothers, sisters, and me. Yeah, we need to get back to that, that every human being on this world is family of God, and we need to get them into the family of God. And by the way, my natural family is not more important than ministry. Oh, someone's going to feel offended. But you need to read the Word of God. Because the Bible I read says, when you marry your husband or your wife, you are to cling to your mom and dad all the rest of your days, never move into ministry, never get uncomfortable, make sure you're at all the family outings, and never inconvenience yourself with ministry. Here, I missed that section of the Bible. Because my Bible says you shall forsake your father and your mother and cling unto your husband and cling unto your wife and leave them to do what? To follow Jesus. Oh, man. I told you you're going to get offended. Jesus never stopped by and said, hey, Peter, why don't you go get your husband? And your, oh, no, you better not have a husband, Peter. Just saying. 
but why don't you get your wife and kids and get a consensus and talk to your mom and dad and father-in-law, mother-in-law, and see if they ought to go in ministry and move to where God wants them to go. Go ask them. I missed that in The Chosen. Oh, we all like The Chosen until we're chosen. You know, that'll sink in. Let me say that again. We all like The Chosen until we're chosen. Right? Until God walks up to you and says, by the way, I want you, but I'm going to miss dinner with my mom. And God's like, because I want to see who's the God of your life. Ooh, conviction fall. It got a holy hush has filled the room. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? You see, God wants you to be uncomfortable. Halal praise is a place where I'm living, where I'm living no longer with mom and dad because I left mom and dad back in Yada. Everyone get that? That's when I made my mind, God, whatever you want to do. My husband don't want to go with me. I don't care. And praise the Lord. Now I'm to Eli. Now I've got a story. And now, Lord, I'm moving into Lao because I want to be radical because I want a power-driven foundation. Because power-driven foundations carry buildings like that back there. Everyone see the building back there? This is a major construction right. This is Tehillah. That's my personal testimony. You see, you got to get this. Man, I, you, you guys got to get this. Y'all getting this? God has not called you to live in a house. American Christianity has been sold the biggest lie in the history of mankind, and that is that Jesus touches you, saves you, so you have a nice little family, and you have a nice little home, and you have your nice little property, and you live in your nice protected area, and you have three dogs and a cat, and two guinea pigs. Just had to throw that out there. And you have all these things in your life so that you can sit there and go, life's so good now. And my, here comes all the little kids like good little duckies walking behind mommy and daddy. That's not God's plan. God's plan is to make us radicals. Everyone shake your head and go yes at least. All right? Act like you're engaged. You see, God has called you and I to be the answer to a troubled world. If you want to know why America is so bad right now, it's because the church sucks. Yes, I use that word, sucks. Somebody's like, I can't believe you said that. I, I can't use any worse words than that because I don't use any worse words than that. That's the worst word I use. But it does because the church has dropped the ball. Where we're supposed to be the light of the world, we started hiding in our buildings. We wonder, oh, is that a new car out there coming in today? Oh, praise God. Maybe they'll give us some money. Oh, they don't look like us. Oh, God, we don't want those people. I know those people from down the road in the trailer cart. That's what the American church became. Because we don't understand. I remember whenever in the 80s, whenever I was just young, starting ministry, my brother went to a conference in Reading, PA, and Paul Young E. Cho was there. You don't know who he is. It doesn't matter who he is. But he's, he has the biggest church, last I knew, in the world. And it was in, in Korea. And he said something, and this is what he said. I'll never forget his accent. I, I had it memorized. It burned. Something's burned into your mind, right? And I'll never forget it. And he says, oh, you American stupid Christians. He said, you go after doctor or lawyer. You go after rich people and you hope they come to your church, make church easy. He says, we in Korea... We go after the junk and the nobodies. And God make them into doctor, lawyer, and give much money and big testimonies. And I'll never forget that. And I thought, that's American. I don't know about, man, I feel the Holy Spirit. That's why I love the Misfit Island toys we got sitting right here. Because you don't know, there's business owners sitting here. There's so radical evangelists. There's preachers. But honey, you got to step into them. You can't just sit and say, yeah, I'm one of those. Well, then do something! That's the pastor in me coming out. Y'all love me? Good, because it's going to get convicting. You thought it was good there? Oh, no, we're going deeper. You see, that's what goes on a pile foundation. Does everyone understand that? You don't see a nice little three-bedroom house there. You see a building. How many people you think can live in that building? Why? Because I am not my own. I've been bought by the price of the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And where he calls me, I want to. I look around at you guys. I, can I tell you something? There was a day in my life where the devil tried really hard to talk me out of going into ministry and quitting. Do you realize half of you, probably I'm going to say 90% of you would never be sitting here today. If I would have walked away, you'd be somewhere else or maybe nowhere. I don't know where you'd be. But because I made up my mind and I said, you know what? I want to move to halal praise because I made the choice. And listen. Listen. 
There was nothing that changed in my life. I didn't start having oil dripping out of my hands and my feet, and I didn't sit there and pray for people and their teeth turned to gold. I've never had that yet. I'm waiting for that. But don't even go there. Just forget that part. I made up my mind. I was willing to go through the process. I was willing to fight harder. I was willing. It was so funny. We were working on Shalak yesterday, and there's like, is anyone giving you a hard time yet here? I'm like, for what? For what you're doing to this church? I'm like, I don't really care. I'm saying that on, on Facebook. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Dan and you, I don't care? Because I hold up the deed, and it says the Rock Church Kissy Valley owns it. So how many know when I own it, it's our building? And we can do whatever we want to make it look as unchurchy or as churchy as we want. Everyone say amen. amen. Because I know I got the backing of a whole bunch of crazy people who are in there tearing apart pews and doing things in the building, which is really awesome to me. Oh, I shouldn't say this on camera. I'm going to anyhow, okay. It was so fun. They had the big old pulpit up there, and they're like, what are we going to do this? I said, smash it. <laughs> Three minutes later, Tim had it in pieces all over the floor. Four minutes later, it was in the back of Lee's dump truck. So fun. You know how much I love wrecking those kind of things? Seriously. God has called you, and you're here for a purpose and a reason, and God has anointed you not to sit there and fulfill your destiny of your life, but to fulfill the destiny of God's heart in your life. But you have to be willing to move in through these steps and make up your mind that I'm leaving mother and father, I'm leaving my family, that's not what's important. Now listen, that doesn't mean I don't love my mom and dad, that doesn't mean I don't love my brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean I sit there and snub them, but that means, you know what, and I'll just tell you honestly, and I'm going to offend somebody again, here we go, every time down the road. God, but it don't matter, and I'm just going to tell you a fact. It does not matter if my mom and dad would sit there and say, this might be our last Christmas Eve. Will you come stay with us and hang out with us, and we're going to have a family get together. I would say, I'm not going to be there. You know why I'm not going to be there? Because I know where I'm going to be Christmas Eve. I'm going to be at 1715 State Route 56, Spring Church, Pennsylvania, because I pass through the Rock Church, and it doesn't matter if anyone likes it or not, I'm going to be here having a Christmas Eve service because that's another time when I can reach out to lost and dying people that might not have ever experienced God, and I promise I'm going to try to make the craziest out-of-the-box Christmas Eve service that I possibly can. Right? Because that's what we're supposed to do. And if that offends you, you got a problem in Tehila or you got a problem in Yara. But you ain't getting into halal till you get this mindset that I am God's property and where God tells me to go, it doesn't matter who likes it or who wants it. I'm going to get people in this building. And when I get into this halal place, halal is when I see and move into my heavenly equity. Are you all getting that? It's, I moved, everyone know what equity is? How much, no, I'm not talking about equity and diversity, so get over that. You, you know it made me sick this morning. I typed in definition of equity, and that's what I got. I'm like, you guys are fruitcakes. You try to walk into a bank with that definition of equity, and you tell me how much money they're willing to loan you. When you can't even figure out what's what in life yet. I'm, that's all I have to say about that. Equity is when I move into a place where I realize my authority and what I own. Everyone shake your head and go, yes. Because I now am positioned where I can borrow against my equity for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. You all getting this? If you haven't realized it, oh, God's cool. God has increased our natural equity and God has increased our spiritual equity exponentially in this year in the Rock Church. God has brought people from the north, south, east, and west, and some of you are sitting here that you don't understand that God does not have you here so that you sit there and say, Terry's a really good preacher because I am, but <laughs> some of you got that. Some of you went over your head. It's okay. You know, you'll catch it later if you watch the rerun. All right? It's not for that. It's because God sees something in you where you are messed up, screwed up, have been, but God's going to give you a yada, God's going to give you a tehillah, and God's going to move you into halal because you are spiritual equity in the kingdom of God, and the devil is scared to death that you're going to get it. He's scared to death that you're going to realize your position. He's scared to death that you're going to revolt because he knows that the day you get it and you move into this spot, that you are going to become a world changer and you and your family because when the man of the household moves in the position he's supposed 
supposed to be, everything starts falling in. But listen, when the woman of the household moves in first, you know, it's this is statistics I'm going to give you right now. If a woman comes to church and comes and finds Jesus first, there's a 20% chance that the family will be saved. When the husband comes to church first and gets saved, there's an 80% chance that the family will follow Jesus and get saved. How many know that's pretty crazy? Okay, guys, put on your big boy panties and start stepping up and getting into your call of God. Someone said to me this morning, the men of our church are being attacked. Okay, big boys, fight through it and kick the devil's butt to find out what's on the other side. That's my advice to you. Because it says, when the strong man keeps his goods there at peace, but when a stronger than he comes, he binds the strong man and spoils his good. Honey, we're going to bind Shalakta and take their goods, and we're going to go to Vandergrift and take their goods, and we're going to see the glory of God be poured out, and I don't know where we're going next, but hang on. Because God's good. Y'all, y'all getting this? I'm talking about moving into your spot where you have equity with God, where you stand in that place. i got to hurry up, okay? So what I'm really talking about is your talents. Everyone understand that? You see, if you go into the Bible, there's a story, I think it's in Matthew 25, where, where God talks about it. Jesus sits down and says, I have talents. I gave one five, I gave one two, and I gave one one. Now listen, it doesn't mean that he liked any better or any less. You see, all of us are created for such a time as this. Not everyone in this church can be a crazy pastor like me and just be weird. But God anointed me with five talents. I'm just kidding. I don't know how many he gave me. I just keep on going with what he gave me. But you see, he gave all of us talents. Everyone say, I've got a talent. Now listen, the talent is not what you think the talent is. The talent can only be found when I'm willing to go through the process and find my halal, which is my spiritual equity, and I stand in this place and I find out what God really wants to do in my life. In that moment, I become to the place where God wants me to be, and now I'm moving in my talents and my equity, and suddenly they begin to build. By the way, when I read the Bible, it tells me what happens. Whenever they came back, everyone except the one with one had what? Spiritual equity. One did something. What did he do? He buried it and said, well, I don't want to stand before God. I just... He was the one who wanted to retire at the Bahamas. He was the one that when that someday when I retire, I'm going to get me a big old RV and go see. God didn't call you to do that. I got an RV waiting for me up there. How about it, Ross? And I'm going to get in. It's a, I don't know what the biggest brand is now. No, it's not even up there because you know what? Even when I get up there, God's just got word for you. You ain't staying up there. You guys really need to read your Bible because it's like, I can't wait to heaven. It's only temporary because you're coming back here. Read the end of the story. He says, I'll make you kings. I'll make you judges. I'll make you priests. I'll make you all those kind of things. So all you're doing right now is being trained for your future position that God's going to give you when you come back here. Now, I don't know about you. I don't want to be in charge of the sanitation department. So I'm working really hard to get a promotion to at least the water authority. I don't know where I'm going to be, but I made up my mind one thing. When I get before him, I don't even have to worry about whether I'm going to hear well done. I know I'm going to get well done, but I want to see what my talents did. I want to see the spiritual equity. Have you all getting this this morning? Because I don't know how to make this any plainer anymore. Why do you want to sit there and hang around and be somewhere and do things that doesn't do anything? I don't get that. God wants us to change the world. You know, it seems really simple. Well, you know, we have a fun set. I don't really, that's really not my cup of tea. Ain't my cup of tea either. I would rather rock climb than play with a bunch of people and watch them rock climb. But you know what? You know why I do it? Because I can do it and I can hang out with them. And Garrett even came in as gimpy as he is because Liz stepped on his foot and broke it. I'm hoping she goes on a diet. That's the story I heard. <laughs> that's a good story right there. <laughs> Shoes flying at me. Blessings from the Lord are falling my way. <laughs> I love you, Liz. You said I haven't talked about you in a long time. That's Liz now. She had to work in the coffee shop and, or the pizza shop with me last night. She's like, I'm so glad to be here with you. That's not what she really said. <laughs> uh, I love you, Liz. You have to love me to get to heaven, just so you know. Why did you step on his foot? Oh, denial is always the first thing that happens. <laughs> he did slip. She feels she's all nervous now, and everyone's looking at her. Where was I? <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, you just got to have fun, you know what I mean? How many know church should be fun? It should be memorable. It was really cool when I got to tell you a story. Can I tell you a story? This kid, I don't know how old he is, and I don't know who he belongs to, because I can't, if I don't know your name, please don't be offended. Ask my wife to tell me, because she knows your name. But seriously, I was, this morning I was at the door in the first service, I was like, it was a tough service. This one's a lot easier. I don't know why today, but it's a lot easier. Some of them are just hard. And this kid walked out and said, I really enjoyed your service, and he walked out. And I didn't acknowledge him. He walked, came back out in line again and said, I just want to know, I really enjoyed your service this morning. He was about that big. And I thought, God, how cool is it that you can use an old guy like me to touch a young kid like that? Can I tell you something? That's the power of God. And God wants to change this place. And it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter what you look like. It's not all you look as good as me. It's okay. God can still use you. Come on, it's just fun, laugh. Jeez. You see, it's about stepping into where God wants to step in. That's what halal praise is all about. And I want to close with something, and i got to fly through here real fast. So this is something God showed me, and I just want to leave this. And this was something amazing that happened to me last week. The time change took place last week. I don't know if anyone remembers or not, but man, there were some crazy storms last Sunday morning. It was... The clouds were just black. I mean, it was, I got up and it was black. And I was driving down the road here, 56, and I honestly was like almost disoriented from the environment, which I saw. It looked like there was a big mountain range over here. It was just black. And it was black that way, and the thunderstorms or whatever was going on. I don't remember what was going on, but it was just so dark. And I pulled into the church, and I tried to take a picture, but right above us, there was this light. And it was so cool. And I pulled in, and God said, Terry, you've broken through the darkness. And I was like, I like that. Because you know what? My prayer was when I got attacked in 2008 relentlessly, and a lot of it was my dumb fault. I'll be the first person, man, I was stupid as stupid does. And you fall into traps and things like that. And by the way, it's okay. God has a plan for in the middle of the stupid. But I remember whenever it seemed like my life was falling apart, that one day God spoke to my heart, and he said, Terry, the devil wants your ministry. This is a demonic assault in your life. And so the whole thing has been about that, to destroy you, to stop you from doing what you're doing. And I remember sitting there praying that day and saying, God, let there be a day when the other bigger demons grab that demon by the neck and shake it and say, you told me it would work. And you know what? I went through some really tough times. Dave's back in the back. He's standing back here. He doesn't come to church all the time, but I'm praying one day he'll break through. That was a slam, Dave. Did you get that? Okay, good. But anyhow, he took me for a ride one day, and he says, I never saw anyone as depressed as you were because you were caught up in a fetal position in the passenger seat. We went to Uniontown, I think, to get a gun, right? Yeah. And I remember that season. That's where the devil wants to destroy us. But you've got to make the choice to go through the process to become the halal. We can spend a lot of time there. I don't want to live there. And I broke through. And you know what God was saying is you broke through the darkness. He wasn't just saying I broke through the darkness. He was saying we broke through the darkness. I don't know about you, but I really want to see where this goes. And I really want to see what God's up to. It doesn't mean there's not going to be storms. doesn't mean there's not going to be people not like each other. doesn't mean that things aren't going to go bad sometimes. doesn't mean any of those. doesn't mean that people aren't going to slow shoes at me. But I'm okay. Some are just bad aims. Their eyesight's fell on them, so it's all good. Just kidding. But this is what I know. And I want you to listen very closely in the last few minutes. God has you here for a reason and a purpose. That reason and the purpose is to transform this world through the power of Jesus Christ by walking in the Holy Spirit to the place of halal. Where you leave your father and your mother, you leave all those kind of things, you build your personal hymn history story, and you move into the spot where the Holy Spirit moves like he's never moved before. And God is positioning us that we have that possibility of it happening if we obey. I don't know about you, I'm obeying. I don't always like it. I really don't. I've lost a lot of sleep over obeying sometimes, but you know what? I know God wants to do it for the glory of God. And I want to look at everyone. I wish I could grab everyone and just hold you by your cheekies or by your ears and say, God has a plan for you. Step into it. Would you stand with me this morning? God said this. I love it. This time of year is so cool to me. 
I don't know, I don't remember a spring like this spring in a very long time. I forget the name of the plant now, but around us is the yellow bushes. What are they called? Forsythia, thank you. They're all around my house. My neighbor has a wall of them. And I don't know. This year they're blooming like crazy. Has anyone else noticed those? Like I'm driving home. It's like we hit like the perfect, because many times I guess they got froze or whatever. But man, this year it's like I took a picture of my house and it looks like the top of the bushes are all green or all yellow and the, the bottom's like brown and I have some daffodils down below. It looks like just a wave of yellow crashing down in my yard in the picture. And it's so cool. You drive down the road and I'm like distracted half the time looking at all the yellow that's everywhere. And I'm here to tell you that God's moving you into a season where he wants to do a new thing. And I'm not just saying that just to try to hype you up. I mean that to every individual that is here this morning because I don't believe that things happen just by chance, but I believe with all my heart that God has people here for divine appointments. Okay, Lord, I'll obey. Just like Todd over there, who's sometimes not very bright, but God brought him here from Vermont to change the world. And if you do it again, I'm going to kick you in the crotch. He knows what I'm talking about. And I don't care if Amy likes it or not, I'm going to anyhow. But God's brought people, brought God, Garrett here from Virginia. God brought my beautiful wife, Bethany, over there from Maine because she definitely helps me a lot because you wouldn't all be here if it was just me. I'm just telling you, she is definitely the sugar in my life. But I want to tell you this, God's brought you with your own personal story and your own personal testimony to this place for such a time as this to radically change the world. But it's your choice. It's your choice whether football, baseball, camping, boating, skiing, fishing, whatever is going to be more important or you're going to let go of your life and say, okay, God, I want to move into the place that God wants me to be and I'm going to let go. That's hard. But let me tell you how worth it is when you stand in halal. Let me tell you how great it is. You wait and see what God's going to do in Vandergrift. And I mean that with all my heart. You wait and see what God's going to do in Shalakti. Look around you what God's done here. I looked at my wife this morning and I said, man, we almost need to go to a third service. You're now statistically putting me in a place where we should, but we're not. We're just crowding in more and you're just going to have to put arms around each other and wear underarm deodorant and take a shower and wash your, brush your teeth and use Listerine. Did I miss anything? Just kidding. But seriously, God's trying to do something amazing in your life. I mean, Ashley's having twins. I'm speaking it, Ashley. She's really not. I'm making it up, okay? Some people are like, is she really having twins? No. She's not. It's just Sammy started it and I heard it and I just went with it. But seriously, God is blessing and God is moving and God is touching. And I, I wish I could grab everyone by the cheek seriously and say, do you know what God's trying to do in your life? But you've got to make up your mind whether you want to be Elmer's glue or you want to go through the process of God turning you into and going through the process of becoming epoxy or cement. Either one. I don't want you to be asphalt because asphalt can be melted down and turned into something else, but cement can't do it. It can for really, really hot, like volcano-ish, but we're not talking that. That's the Holy Spirit here. That's his job. But I'm asking you this morning to let go and let God. I'm going to do something. My camera's on, Todd. Yeah. Hey, we're really glad you guys tuned in. We love you guys. I pray you'll become epoxy. We're excited to see what God's going to do in your life too. Jesus loves you, thinks you're amazing.